What I am thinking about now though is that like this script is really stupid. I'm actually so confused now. Wait, please never code like this ever. If a machine were to write code just for other machines, let's assume humans will have no interaction here, right? They would all write it on just one line. Because think of binary, you know, ones and zeros. Binary does not have spacing systems. And when I say spacing systems, I don't mean like actual spaces because binary is still separated with spaces. I just mean when like you're coding and you hit enter or like, you know, you hit like tab or something because the only purpose of this is just to make code more readable to a human and i can actually prove this to you right now have you ever seen something that basically goes like this right so if true then return end because a lot of my tutorials use lines exactly like this as do a lot of professional scripters right but the thing is again this is just one line the thing is the proper way technically to write this would be if true and then you write return over here okay technically this is the correct way to write code okay however both of them will do the same thing because let's say if instead of returning i do like print one or something and here i'm gonna print two it prints one and it prints two meaning that both of these are actually correct in what they do and so i was just thinking how far can we actually take this and so after a bit of digging on dev forum i found this script that someone else made i honestly have no idea what this does it looks like it just checks for all scripts and then disables them i don't know what this man was doing but whatever sure we're gonna use this code in order to write all of this on one line properly i need to introduce you to a concept that you might have heard of before but you just don't quite understand what it is that being a scope a scope effectively begins with a certain function and ends with the keyword so for example right a while loop so while true do right this creates a scope so anything done inside of this scope will only remain inside of this scope let me show you what i mean right if i create a variable that's a local variable right so local var is equal to hello right do you know what local means local means that it can only be used within that scope so because i'm creating this variable just inside of the script it means that i'm able to access this variable wherever i want so i can access it here right so it lets me use var I can access it here, so it lets me use var, right? Very nice. But then if I were to take this line and make it in here instead, well, now this variable is local inside of this scope. So I'm able to use it inside of the scope, but not outside of it. So in short, a scope is just anything that's inside of a function that ends with this word. It could also be a for loop, you know, as mentioned here. And it also could be an if statement as shown here. So if we look at the code, really all that's going on here is just we have three scopes, right? We have a while true scope. And then inside of the scope, you know, it waits for one second. Then it does a for loop scope. And then inside of that for loop, it does an if statement scope. And so if we can understand that, well, then we're effectively ready to transform all of this into just one line of code. What I am thinking about now, though, is that like this script is really stupid because like, bro, it just goes through every script and sets enabled to false, right? I don't do module scripts have this property. I don't think they do. If I run the game, what's going to happen? Enable is not a valid member of module script. Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty sure that module scripts don't even have enabled, bro. Do they? Yeah, they don't. Bro, what an amazing script. Okay, how about this? Instead of disabling the script, let's just print out the script, okay? So if I run the game right now, there we go. Look at that. And so now let's try and make this all on one line. All right, so first things first, we need to make the while true loop. Now, something that I'm thinking right now is we might actually want to optimize this code a little bit. So like, for example, right, instead of doing while true do and then waiting for one second, you can just say while task.wait one do. Right? So you can just do this instead of having to do a true and then having to add a task.wait to it. And the other fix that I'm seeing right now is you don't even need to use pairs. So I can just say for underscore s in game get the sentence. So I don't need the pairs thing. That's basically outdated at this point. So now we just began a scope. If I wanted to end the scope, because as you can see right now, this is doing a red underline. If I close the scope with an end, the red underlines are now gone. So effectively what this does is it creates and ends a while loop. So then the next scope that we want is a for loop. So now I can say for, you know, underscore comma s in, and remember we're not going to use pairs. So I'll just say game gets descendants and then I'll do another end. So we've just made another scope. Okay. Now, obviously this is getting a little confusing, right? That's why spacings exist. And so I'm thinking right now, what, what can we actually do to make this more organized, but still keep it on one line? Yeah, no, I think in this scenario, like all we can really do is just add more spaces, right? So I think to actually separate these scopes, let's just add two more spaces instead of just one. Okay. So while task.wait do, then we're going to separate that. Then we start, you know, the for loop and then we do the whole scope do. 
we're gonna add two more spaces, and then we're gonna add two more spaces here. Okay, so the way this works is while task.way do, right, then we have our own scope over here, and then this is the end of the first scope. Okay, very good, we're not done yet. Now what we have to do is we need to do this if statement, which as you can see is done inside of this for loop. And it basically just checks if s is a script or s is a local script or s is a module script. And in this case, s is the item that we're currently going through, right? So game get descendants basically just gets every single item that's inside of the game. And so s is equal to the item that we're currently looping through. And honestly, at this point, all I'm doing really is I'm just copying the code at the bottom, right? Is a script. And so I guess I could just copy this, right? So I'm not copying this. So, you know, technically I'm not cheating, but I could copy what I write myself. That's perfectly fine. Local script, not what, what is a localization table? Localization table. What is that? What does that do? Okay, I guess it has something to do with language. I don't know. It's just this is like one of those items which like nobody actually knows what they do. You know, it's like hidden in the depths of like the Roblox Studio files. But yeah, let's actually turn that into a local script. Or S is a module script. And then we need to check if S.name is not equal to the script.name, right? So and S.name is not equal to the script dot name and i think i just accidentally deleted my other end so let's actually change that there we go i'm actually so confused now wait while task dot wait do okay then we do our loop okay then we do our if statement so if this if 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 yes and if script dot name is this name then what we do right so then we need to print s we're gonna do three spaces we're gonna print s and then we're gonna have another three spaces so then this will end the if statement another end this should end the uh for loop and then we need a final end to end the while loop okay so end space 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 okay let's try that okay so i'm not seeing any red underlines this looks legit okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this code and i'm gonna comment it out okay you can basically think of it as if this code doesn't even exist right the only thing that this script will try running is this line of code and so i'm gonna clear the output uh, hopefully this, <laughs> hopefully we've done everything right. And if I run the game right now, beautiful. We're so good at scripting, it's actually crazy. Now, because we're doing a loop every one second, my game is somewhat about to crash. Okay, so let me try stopping that and hopefully that's not gonna cause my laptop to explode. Please? please because it's done that before not explode but it crashed okay there we go yeah so that's literally just proof that you can take whatever code that you want and literally just convert it into one line like i don't know if i copy this right now and i insert this right i could actually have done something like this this could have been the code i mean obviously this looks like terrible code and please never code like this ever right but if i really wanted to with the knowledge of what a scope is right and how i would actually have to you know format code if we're just doing it on one line like for, for in this example i'd have to do a while true and then do the task.wait, and then make this scope, and then make this scope, and then do the print s, then end the if scope, then end the for scope, then start a while true scope, then do the task.wait, then start a for scope inside of the wild scope. Now, has anything that I just said made any sense? Probably not, okay? But, you know, it's it was fun to talk about. In case you are a beginner and you're wondering, like, how you could actually implement this, right? In the example that I showed off before, which is like, you know, if true then return end using one line for your code is actually good for quick scenarios like this it's where you quickly need to do something right so for example let's say if i'm doing a um I'll, let me i'll actually show you a live example right now if i create a part okay i'm actually gonna just completely <laughs> delete this line because I, I don't want my game to lag anymore and so let's say inside of this part i add a click detector right? this basically lets me detect whenever the part has been clicked on i understand that you're confused that you know an item named click detector is able to detect clicks i know that's very confusing but you know just bear with me for a bit and so then whenever i want to actually detect the click i just have to get the part so workspace dot part then i have to get the click detector and then i have to say mouse click right i'll connect that to a function and so what this does okay is it basically creates a scope and because we're connecting this function to a mouse click event it actually gives us a variable which is the player who clicked so i can just name this whatever i want i can name it to player i can name it to player who clicked whatever right point is this variable will only be accessible inside of this scope and nowhere else i can't do player who clicked outside of the function right but inside of the function i can use it and so what i could do right now is um hmm, i'm not even sure how can we do this but let's make a counter let's say local counter right counter is equal to one okay and so what i want to do here is basically i want to check whether this thing 
is divisible by two, right? Meaning, is it even? And if that thing is actually even, then we're gonna print something, right? But if it isn't even, then we're just not gonna print anything. And so let's assume that this will be even, right? So what do we wanna print? Let's print um, is even, okay, let's do that. But then before we print, how can I do a security check to ensure that this counter variable is actually even? Well, what I could do is I could say if counter and then I could do a percentage mark, and then I could say two, and then check if that will be equal to zero, and then I could say then, and then we could return. So in short, this line of code basically just says like, okay, if we take counter and we divide it by two, what is going to be the decimal point, right? So if the decimal point is zero, then that means that counter is actually divisible by two, which I'm just now realizing that we actually don't want to return, right? Because we want it to only return when it's an odd number, right? So we just need to check if it's actually not equal to zero. And then as a final thing, we actually probably should like increase the counter. So counter plus equals one, okay? And then if I play the game right now, right? And we, you know, see the part, if I click on it, is even. If I click on it again, doesn't print anything. Click on that again, is even, again, doesn't do anything, again, is even, again, doesn't do anything, again, is even. So that's pretty nice. That actually works in our favor, right? But then instead of doing it like this, what I just did here, right? I could just get rid of these lines and then just say return end. I could do this, right? Or a more optimized way of actually doing this is instead of checking if it's not and then returning and then printing, I could just check if it, if it is equal to zero and then I could print, right? I could do this. As you can see here, we've literally just boiled it down from like, what was it, like five lines of code down to just two lines of code. And the best part is that it works exactly the same. Is even, doesn't print, is even, doesn't print. So yeah, legit bro, hopefully you found some value from this. Uh, I don't even know, was this video valuable bro? Was it just entertaining? Let me know. I had fun making this bro. Something that I actually think would be a fun challenge is uh, if you could join my Discord server and then just like post like the longest line of code that you can write, that actually would be pretty funny. And if you are a beginner developer or someone just looking to develop and you know, you found this video, you know, fairly helpful or you just enjoy my teaching style or maybe it's like a combination of both. I do have a course in the description, which like, don't worry, you know, it has a free preview, you know, it has like a refund policy. So I'm not trying to scam you. Okay. I know people that say like, oh yeah, courses are scams or whatever. If you are considering, what I will tell you is that when I first started learning, right, it legit took me like two years to basically get to the point where I was able to confidently navigate this platform, right? Because I know people say like, oh yeah, courses are useless. You can just learn everything on YouTube, right? And the thing is, you could. But to say that courses are a scam is the same thing as saying like, oh yeah, chefs are a scam because you can just make the food at home. Like, you know what I mean? And as a bonus, I'm actually going to be adding like just free content uh, there soon, right? I will be increasing the course price once the content is there though. So if you're debating right now and you're thinking that, you know, the value in the course is actually like reasonable, because I'm saying this because like as a buyer myself, like I'm, as someone who occasionally purchases courses, like I've ran into this dilemma before. And I'm just saying that like in the next month, I will add like more units and more content to the course. But every time I add something, I'm actually going to increase the price by like five or ten dollars, right? So, you know, hopefully that offer seems captivating to you. And I'm going to delete the script. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.